Hello there, my name is Richard McMahon from the interview training company, passmyinterview.com, and in this tutorial, I will teach you how to pass an architect interview. It does not matter which organisation you are being interviewed for, I am going to give you a number of architect interview questions that I can guarantee will come up, and more importantly, top scoring answers to accompany those interview questions. So please do stick around and watch the tutorial from beginning to end because it will make a big difference to your preparation. Now before I get into the content, a quick warm welcome to this architect interview training tutorial. My name is Richard McMahon, that's me there in the centre, and I've been helping people to pass their interviews for about 20 years now, and I do that primarily by creating top scoring answers for you that you can't find anywhere else on the internet. On that basis, please do subscribe to the channel by clicking the red button below the video, and then you won't miss out on any of the training videos I'm uploading. And I would also very much appreciate your support if you gave the video a like. Thank you very much. That always motivates me to create more content for you. So let's get into the architect interview questions and answers. So the first question during your architect interview is going to be, tell me about yourself and the past experiences you have relevant to the role of an architect. So here is my suggested answer. I am someone who is very passionate about my work as an architect. I am highly professional, creative, flexible, and above all, I hold the relevant technical knowledge and expertise to carry out this job in line with the expectations of your company. Now, the past experiences I have relevant to this role include previous stints as an architect at both small and medium-sized organisations, whereby I was often working with a diverse range of clients on complex architectural projects that involved large numbers of interested stakeholders and contractors. I have never missed a project deadline, and I'm always able to come up with solutions to often complex financial or infrastructural architectural issues that meet the needs of the client. One of the main strengths I possess as an architect that I feel makes me a strong contender for this position is the fact I'm someone who always takes ownership of challenging situations and I will go the extra mile to come up with the right solution to the project I am responsible for. So that's a strong, confident answer that then sets you up for the remainder of your architect interview with confidence. So the second question I want you to prepare for is why do you want to work for our company as an architect? I can guarantee this will come up pretty early on during your architect interview. So here is my suggested answer. I want to work for a company that puts good architectural design at the core of everything it does, and also one that has a strong reputation in the industry that attracts the most challenging projects to work on. Now, before applying for this architect position, I carried out lots of research in relation to the, the past work you'd carried out, your ethics and values, and also what your plans are for the future. And as my research went on, you became more and more appealing to work for. If I'm successful, I feel I will be working alongside some of the best architects in the business, and I will be able to put my extensive experience to good use. This means I will be able to thrive in the role and help you achieve your commercial and financial objectives. So the next question is, somebody delivers a substandard piece of work to you late that is needed for a client presentation the following morning. What would you do? So let me just repeat that question. Somebody delivers a substandard piece of work to you late that is needed for a client presentation the following morning. What would you do? Here is my suggested answer. I would take ownership of the situation and stay behind late to get the work up to the standard needed in time for the presentation the following morning. Now, although it really should be down to the person to go back and complete the work properly themselves, I would not have the confidence in them to do the work necessary on time. Therefore, I would express my dissatisfaction with the work, sort it out myself, and then speak to the person at a later date to discuss the reasons why the work was not up to standard, and also what they needed to do next time in order to not let the team down in the future. As I say, I would always put the business first and take ownership of a situation like this to make sure the work we are producing is up to the correct standards. Next question of your architect interview. Now, in your opinion, what are the necessary skills and qualities needed to be an architect? Here is my suggested answer. 
I believe there are seven really important skills and qualities needed to be a competent architect. First of all, you need a genuine passion for your work. Now, passion breeds hard work, determination, and also a commitment to excellence. Other qualities you need are confidence in your work, a desire to maintain technical competence, an adaptable approach to projects, and also exceptional communication skills. Finally, you need to have commercial awareness to ensure the work you carry out is part of the organisational strategic objectives your employer is working towards, and also a collaborative approach to completing architectural projects successfully. So that shows you've really thought carefully about what the skills and qualities are, and I also like the fact in that answer that you are giving a set number. So in that response, you are giving seven really important skills and qualities. Next question. Tell me how you organise, plan and prioritise your work as an architect. Here is my suggested answer. I always plan my work by deciding which tasks or projects require my attention in line with the objectives of the company I'm working for or the project I am accountable for. I am a big user of checklists as these assist me in keeping my work organised and they also ensure I complete all work on time and also based on which tasks need my attention the most. Now at all times I aim to be both effective and efficient. So effective is basically doing the right tasks and efficient is doing those tasks in the right manner. I am also very good at time management and I have an innate ability to complete architectural tasks and projects on time regardless of their complexity. Finally, I always carefully manage the information I receive from others. So this includes only attending meetings I have to, prioritising emails that need my attention and also reading up on and researching information and data that is applicable to the projects I am working on. I feel my previous experience makes me highly competent at organising, planning and prioritising as an architect. So that's a very strong answer to that question. Next one. What are the three main costing methods open to architects and which, in your opinion, is the best for our business? So let me just repeat that question. What are the three main costing methods open to architects and which, in your opinion, is the best for our business? Here is my suggested answer. The three main methods of costing are percentage basis, lump sum and charge for time. Now there are obviously pros and cons with each of them. However, the best for your, for your business, in my opinion, would have to be the charge for time costing option, as this means you can accurately get paid for the exact work you carry out for a client. Now having said that, the charge for time option is least popular with clients because the fees can start to run away. The percentage fee option is useful for very large projects and will require a closer working relationship between the client and the architect. Now what's important with this option is that the exact scope of work must be agreed beforehand. Now the lump sum option is great for certain projects providing the exact works are defined before the works commence. This option means you have the foresight to allocate the exact resources, personnel and time needed to the project based on the prior agreed lump sum amount. Now, if you'd like more help with your architect interview, there's a link that's appeared in the top right hand corner of that screen. If you click that, it'll take you through to my website, passmainterview.com, where you can download more great answers to difficult interview questions. I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. Um, other than that, please do subscribe so you don't miss out. And as I say, I would very much appreciate your support if you liked the video. Thank you for watching. I wish you all the best for passing your architect interview and have a brilliant day. Thank you.